gentlemen, boys and girls. What do you think of it so far? That's the idea. I gather from the singing that we've already more or less got the idea. The other thing is, I know that we're all City fans here tonight, and we're just three days away from giving those red bastards a fucking good idea. fight on my fucking behalf. <laughs> well, that's not the spirit of friendly rivalry trying to encourage. <laughs> <laughs> now, I feel as if my whole life has been leading up to this point. Listen, uh, I know that it's like we're all pro city here this evening, but what we've got to bear in mind is that, believe it or not, although we started it and we've got more right than anybody else, there are people elsewhere in the country who don't like fucking United either. <laughs> like Liverpool, Leeds, not London, obviously. <laughs> it is, so it, it's, it's a, the whole theme of this is like anti-Manchester United. Not, I, know, I know the city thing's brilliant, but we've got to bear in mind which, we're trying, we're trying to reach out to those people who can't stand the fuckers either. <laughs> well, I'm painting a picture for you. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, like, when they... You know, you've got to think about... To be fair to United fans, they, you know, there are decent ones. I'm sure one day I'll fucking meet one. <laughs> Well, you know, when they play Arsenal and Spurs, the United fans are there, and, and some of them don't get home till fucking half six, seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just try and set the, uh, the tone for the evening here. I'll, I'll just show you what we're up against. I'll just take you back to a little, uh, a little incident that concerns that other place. And... Uh, a few years ago, they were playing in the in the Cup Winners' Cup. Um, you see, this is what we're up against all the, all the time. Uh, they were playing uh, the second leg against the Greek team. I think they're called Athenaikos. And it was a foregone conclusion. It was on telly, fucking obviously. <laughs> um, obviously, they were going to piss it, and then everything, Trevor McDonald was ready, everything was going to go ahead as usual. Right? <laughs> Unfortunately, with 10 minutes to go, it's still fucking nil-nil. So what do they do? It's going to go into extra time. You might remember this. They fucking postponed news at 10. Because United were playing against a team of fucking waiters. They fucking said... The fucking nation was holding its breath. Trevor, fucking stand by, mate. We didn't find out until 24 hours after the rest of the world that the fucking Berlin Wall had come down. <laughs> they postponed news at 10. <laughs> 10 days later, City are playing at Notts County. And they put the match back 24 hours so it doesn't clash with fucking Nottingham Goose Fair. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Fucking right, that. <laughs> Fucking up again. Can get away with anything. Which leads me to Manchester United players' driving abilities. <laughs> now, they had a bit of a bad patch, didn't they? They, I mean... Coming out, after, coming out of that car park after training, it was like fucking wacky races. <laughs> if they weren't fucking colliding with each other, they were hitting innocent motorists going to fucking Asda. <laughs> Beckham got off his speeding charge because he said his Ferrari was being tailgated by a fucking Ford Fiesta. <laughs> The 
following day, I said to her, I said, get that fucking fiesta in Auto Trader fucking today. G-Reg, two-tone, Ford Fiesta can outperform a fucking Ferrari. <laughs> Ferguson gets away with it because he's going to shit himself. <laughs> In court, he said, I needed a shit. Your worship. <laughs> so my immediate instinct was to head for Old Trafford. <laughs> well, I was lucky enough to find 67,000 of them. <laughs> and then only a few days later, they revealed that Manchester United owned a breakthrough in automobile technology, a car that can speed on the M1 with no fucker in it. <laughs> fucking get away with everything, don't they? Fucking Middlesbrough game. Referee, the referee won the 100 yards backwards fucking world record. <laughs> whilst being confronted by the cast of fucking Schindler's List. <laughs> Making sure everything's going really well. And I know, I know we have... Um, we do have a laugh, but I mean, you've, you've got to hold your hands up. They, they have had some, some great players over the years, and rivalry apart, I mean, you've got to put your hands up when, when players like, you know, George Best, of course, obviously springs to mind. And I think whatever your loyalties, you think about George and the way he handled his career, and you, you know, your heart goes out to him, isn't it? Really? No, fair's fair. And I know, because he's like an adopted man in many ways, and you think, I mean, the, the, as you know, he's not been so good lately, and the, the bad news is that you might have heard he's done that much damage to his liver over the years. I don't know if you've seen him on the telly. It's shocking. His complexion is... is he look, he's actually yellow now to look at him. But the good news is that he is in the next series of The Simpsons. <laughs> Now, this brings us to the subject of David Beckham, which may be the point you were waiting for. I don't know. Now, as, as you... Uh, I don't know if you know about... You know when they got back from the triumphant tour of Brazil? <laughs> and they were, they, were having, uh, they were having dinner with some friends, and uh, one, one of them says, uh, David, what, was, uh, what, what hotel did you stay, stay in, in in Brazil? He says, uh, oh, uh, he says, give me the name of a, of a big railway station. He says, uh, Houston. He says, no, no, no. Piccadilly. No, no, no. Victoria. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Victoria, what was the name of the hotel I stayed in? <laughs> <laughs> 